Hi guys, Samantha from Juicy Mo Tutorials here and today I'm going to show you how to create a puffed pendant. Now this is a technique that is basically the same as the uh, hollow bead technique except that you will be able to do it with basically any shape so long as it is um, symmetrical on both sides and I'll explain that in a second. So for instance Let's take my mixed heart cutters uh, set number one, large. And this would be the set. These three cutters would work for this technique. However, this one would not. Now the reason for this is because we're going to be taking a veneer and you're going to be putting the veneer over the top and you're going to be just pressing inside and then you're going to cut that onto the tile like so. So you have a shape exactly like this. And then you need to make another one but this one needs to be flipped over like so, so the two halves need to sit together equally. So that would work with this one, where you can basically flip over the shape and it would be the exact same shape. Whereas this one, if you flip it over, you can see that the curve changes sides. So unless you had a mirror of this shape, it would not work. So just bear that in mind when doing this tutorial. So I'm going to be using this shape over here. And we are going to be creating a mica shift mukumegane rather than just a straight up mukumegane. So I've got two, not two, excuse me, I've got a few colours over here with which are cernet metallic. And you'll see what colours they are in the supplies. And so these four are going to be in the Skinner blend, and this is just going to be to uh, it will go on top and I'll show you how that works in a minute. So just put that off to the side and now we want to be making triangles out of these. So all I do is I just generally let's get those out of the way so we don't have a hugely busy area. Just cut them in half like so and then I will just tidy up those edges like so and that can just go back in with whatever colour that was. Keep in mind with this tutorial you can use any veneer you want. I'm just choosing to create a uh, mica shift mukumegane but again any veneer will work. And I just stack that one like so. But this time instead of just trimming it I'm going to lay my previous triangle on top so that we get the same shape. And then I'll repeat that with my other two colours. And there's the last one. Right, so now I am going to just put these in uh, the same order, in the order of colour, so that it's kind of like a, a gradient in a rainbow effect. So you go from red to orange to yellow to gold, uh, to green, excuse me. Now I'm just going to take this side and I'm going to flip it over and trim away that excess. Do the same on the other side, cut it, flip it over, and cut away any excess. Okay, and now we are going to do a Skinner blend. Okay, so I brought you over to the pasta machine. Now I'm going to put it onto my thickest setting to begin with. Okay, and you're going to put it into the pasta machine like so, and you're going to roll. Then I take it down two settings, and this is about a millimeter thick now. Like so. Then I take it down another two settings to about half a millimeter, and this will just make it easier to work with. Then you're just going to fold it like so, and run it through again. And you're just going to continually roll through and fold the exact same way until you have a Skinner blend. So I'll do a few more rolls just to show you and I'll just explain how you're supposed to fold it. You never fold it this way so that you see two colours on either side. You'll always fold it this way so that when you look on either side you only have one colour as you can see and then you'll roll it through. And then continue doing that until you have a fully blended skin blend. And now I want to do it one or two more times just to show you uh, that the colours will start to blend together. There we go. 
you can see here that we're starting to get a gradient. So I'll just roll through one more time and show you that. And there we go, you can really see that the gold is starting to merge into the green and the orange is merging into the red. So I'll just continue doing that until I have a full Skinner blend. Yeah. And here we go, here is our full blend. So now what I want to do is I want to take this and we're going to fold it again like we were before. Just gonna make sure that that's a nice even plug. Right, and then you're gonna roll it through a pasta machine. But instead of it roll, instead of it going through with the rollers here, you're gonna be rolling it so that you're actually stretching it out. So start from this end and work your way to this end. Like so. Then I'm going to take it down another two, another three settings to my thinnest setting and I'm going to again stretch it out. Okay. And there is our whole skin blend. Okay, so now you're going to start on one side and I just am going to start on the green side. It really doesn't matter which side you start on. You can see exactly what I'm doing. But you're going to start and you're going to fold it like so. And you're going to bring that over and you're going to fold again. Now, since we're going to be doing a Kumegana, I don't need the Skinner blend to be perfectly smooth. I would actually rather it was rough. If you were doing a Skinner blend plug, these uh, folds would probably be about, this would be about half the size and you'd have many more folds going through. Uh, if you're confused about that, check out one of my um, Skinner Blend tutorials where I show you how to do a Skinner Blend plug uh, and I explain how to do it properly here. There. This time around I make it so that it's going to work as a Makume Garnet slab. So we do have a Skinner Blend but it's not going to be perfectly smooth and so you're going to see uh, almost a jump between the colours and that's something that I want. So you're just doing that up the entire length of the Skinner Blend and as you're doing this you want to make sure that you're pressing out all the air bubbles so you don't want to be trapping any. Okay. Nice done. And there we go. All finished. Now I'm just going to very quickly press that all together so it's nice and stuck down and then we're going to start rolling it so that we are going to stretch it because I want to be able to make two mukumeganos out of this one for each side of my heart okay, and I use a bit of my roller and then I also use a little bit my fingers just to press it and make it wider and we essentially want to get it down to the point where we could put it through the pasta machine so it needs to be a certain thinness okay and then I can even roll the opposite way to widen it out a bit okay and we're almost at the point where I could put it through my pasta machine there we go now I'm going to again stretch this I'm going to take it all the way up though to my thicker setting and I'm going to run it through. And actually before I do that, we should put this on because we want this to be stretched fairly thin. So don't put the surplus machine yet. Take this down to at least half a millimetre thick. If you can, take it down to your thinnest setting. So that it is thin as it can possibly be. Then place that over the top of your slab and then I'm just going to trim away the excess and again you can just go put that back into your solid uh, back with your solid colour okay there we go just press it up 
just around those edges, make sure it's stuck on properly. And then we're going to run that through on the thicker setting, stretching it. Like so. And that is all we are going to do. Now we're going to cut it in half. And you can see that we have a pretty decent uh, blend. But it's not perfect, which is what I want. Okay, now you're going to choose some uh, texture snips that you want to use for your Mukumegana. I have two different texture snips. I have Lisa Befelka's foliage texture snip since it's got leaves and I think they will play well with this. And then I have my honeycomb texture snip, which again I think will play well with this. Okay, so now for the rubber stamp, we don't need a release. We actually don't need a release with either of them. So let's, let's do the honeycomb one first. And again, you can use any texture stamp you want. Just bring that up. Okay, and I will always store them on these, just in case you have your own ones. And I'm just going to lay that down onto her tile, and because it's nice and sticky on the back, it well not sticky, it's got a certain texture that will stick to ceramic or glass, which is quite nice. Uh, I don't have to worry about it moving around while I'm doing this. Okay, then you're going to take some sort of a wet rag or wet sponge. I'm actually just going to use this wet wipe here because I don't like to um, use extra supplies. But I don't need to. And I generally start in the middle and I'll work my way out this way and then I'll come back and do it this way around. And the reason I'm using the rag is because the clay is sticky and so if you use a roller or your fingers the clay will generally stick to them and that means that you can have it come up and out of the texture set before you're ready and then you don't get a really nice image. Whereas a wet rag or sponge along those lines helps uh, keep the barrier between your fingers or roller and so therefore it doesn't stick. And I'll do the exact same process for the rubber stamp. Okay. I'll lift that up. And you can see what an interesting texture that's given. And you can see how much pigment there is in the clay as well. Okay. And now before I release it out of the texture stamp, I like to face the other way and see whether I've got a good texture. This is what's nice about clear stamps. And I'm actually going to leave that in there because I want the back to dry so that I can press this down and stick it onto the tile. It will make shaving the texture much easier. And so I'm going to do the rubber one next. Okay, so by now this should be dry enough that it will stick to the tile. And all I do is I'll just press down. very nice clean texture. Now you need a flexible blade for this. The sharper the better. And I will generally shave with a little dip. I know some people attach this to a jar and then shave along the sides of the jar but I find that more difficult because this is the way I've always done it. I will grab it with a little dip in the middle and I'll bend the blade. And then I'll begin to shave. You want to go slowly with this, okay? And I will just continue doing that. And I would prefer to go too shallow in the beginning versus too deep. This one I went a little deep over here. Uh, not too deep, but it was a little close because I want to keep the black. So go very slowly, you can always come back and shave more, but if you shave too much, that's it. You can't really do much about that. So just take it slow and steady. Okay, and there we go. Now you can see I did make one or two mistakes where I gouged a little bit too much of the clay. And that's not a huge issue, you want to try to avoid it, but 
it is very easy to do and so it's not a huge train smash or anything like that. Now I'm just trimming away the extra and if I see areas that should be trimmed some more, I'll do that. I think just along this edge here we need to just trim a touch more. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to put this to the side, we will finish off that veneer in a moment or two. We need to uh, burnish it and so on and so forth. And this little scrappy pieces, just pick up bits and pieces and put that to the side. And now we're going to do the leaf one. And so you do basically the same thing, it's just this time around you can't really see through it. Just press that firmly onto your tile. The firmer it's pressed onto the tile, the easier it is to shave because the clay won't move around. And also doing this, just make sure that you've got a very nice texture. You can see that didn't stick to the tile there. There we go. Right, and so this one, because it's a deeper texture, will probably get a more yellow uh, effect. So let's have a look. I say probably. I think we will. We'll have to see. Going to need to shave a bit more. Again, with the last, like the last one, just go slowly and work your way through this. And now it's basically the same depth as the last one, which surprises me. But we're basically going for a summer to autumn transition. So I do want a fair bit of green. So that you can see what we're getting our pattern. So just continue shaving just like the last one. Okay, so here they are. Now bear in mind we still do have to sand them and so uh, we're still going to clear them up quite a bit more with the sanding. And so now you want to take a piece of paper, just plain printing paper, and I want you to burnish the tops. And I just generally rub my fingers over the top. You can use your roller to do this as well. You could even use a credit card of some sort. And all we're doing is we're basically just flattening it out, getting rid of any bumps or holes or any nicks that we might have made while trying to shave it. And just in general getting a nice, clean, even surface to work with. I'm just going to lift that up and I'm going to give a double check. This one looks like it's almost finished. I just need to smooth here. And this one I need to smooth along the edges still. Okay, and there we go. That's just about right. So now I'm just going to pick those up. Okay, and the last step is going to be to run this through my pasta machine on a millimetre thick setting just to make sure that they are at least a millimetre thick, I wouldn't go any thicker than that and then we can proceed with our cutter okay so I'll just generally work out whereabouts I want the clay to be because you're not going to be able to see a huge amount okay, I'm putting this to the side and then just press on these edges where the cutter rim is just to get it stuck in there so, and also so you can see the general shape of your piece. Don't press through the whole way though, you just want to give a general cut to your outline. And then just begin pressing on the inside and just very slowly. And your goal is to just begin doming it. Okay, and tough areas like this you can use a ball tool for. So let me just grab that. Because your finger can't really get in here. <coughs> Excuse me. And bear in mind that this is the inside piece, so nobody's going to be able to see in here, so you don't have to worry about it being slightly uneven. You can even work around the edges with this to get into those tight spots.
I generally just use my finger. Right, and then you can flip it over and see how that is looking, whether you are happy with the dome or not. I think I want to work it just a touch more. Especially here. And you would do the exact same with your other veneer. Lean over to check again. That looks good. Now I'm going to take a uh, tile. Just grab one. And this, it needs to be a tile that will fit in your oven. And place this down. And I generally will stick the veneer down as well. Oops, that's our frame. There. Generally we'll stick the veneer down as well. And then cut with your cutter. And then lift up. And I might just go in and see if I can cut that again just to clean up those edges. And when you lift it up later on, once it's baked, you should be able to clean up those edges. Now the whole point here is that we are trapping the air, so you want it to be stuck down onto that tile well. You don't want to fuss with it. You just want to leave it the way it is. Okay. And then you're going to move on and do the exact same process your honeycomb. Okay, and here are the two hots. So they're basically the same size dome. So now that's going to go into the oven for a full hour at certain it's recommended temperature. And then when they come out, I want you to let them cool completely before removing them from the tile because actually no, you want to remove them while they are hot uh, because the air will um it will expand when it is hot and so when you remove it while it is hot you'll retain the shape whereas if it actually if it cools I find that it actually kind of shrinks in on itself which is not very pleasant looking so remove it while it is hot. Anyway, bake this for an hour and then I'll show you what to do next. Okay so these just got out of the oven they are very hot so I just want to show you how to remove them. I'm holding this with a towel or just a cloth just so that I'm not going to burn myself. And you're just going to lift up under them and transfer them to the other side of your tile, to another tile. And just remove that and let it cool out of the way. And now you've got these beautifully domed pieces. Okay, and now they are quite hot at the moment, uh, but they will cool very quickly. Uh, but before they cool, I like to actually just go around the edges and trim away this excess because it's much easier to trim away while it is hot. So, might as well take advantage of that now. Though if it is too hot, you can always just trim it while it is cold. Okay, so here they are. I've just trimmed them up. Now, you don't have to be perfect about it because we are going to have to sand these edges so that we can put them together so that they will fit perfectly but you can see here basically what we are going to be going for but we need to sand it pretty well for that so grab the coarsest grit of sandpaper you can find and wet it and this is 120 grit and just begin sanding and just continue sanding and checking the two halves until they meet up perfectly and there we go. So now if you put these two halves together, they should basically fit together. Now they're not, they might not fit together perfectly, but they should fit pretty much together. And any uh, off hangings we can pretty easily sand later on, but it should fit together smoothly. Okay, now take some translucent liquid clay, and I'm using Sculpey because it is a really nice sticky liquid clay instead of being very runny it's really nice and sticky and it works very well for um, creating a bond between the two halves so you'll just take that liquid clay and I want you to just tap that around the edges like so And this is a translucent one. You must use translucent because you don't want any colour 
uh, to leach out. If you accidentally get some liquid clay onto the surface of the front, it's not going to be a big deal because it's translucent and you won't end up seeing it. Okay, then we'll take the other half. Press them together. We get a good seal. And then I'm just going to smooth over these edges because we are going to have some liquid clay leaking out, which is fine. And then you can just move that around a little bit until it fits to your liking. Okay, and there we go. Then you will put that into the oven. For at least 40 minutes at so it's recommended temperature and when it comes out then we're going to proceed to start sanding it quite uh, vigorously okay so here is the piece out of the oven so you can see it looks quite good so now I want to just sand along these edges and we want to sand along the front. Now it has to be somewhat cool before you can do that because otherwise it's going to be um, it's going to be easy to press it. So just pop that into a bowl of water and just get that to cool off. And that should be pretty quick. And we're going to be working with an 800 grit sandpaper and a 1200 grit wet paper sandpaper and then I move on to polishing papers which are a finer grit which will move us up to um, more of a shiny finish. So this should be cool enough and all I do is I just start to gently sand and now the reason I'm starting with an 800 rather than my general 400 is because I don't want to sand off too much clay. I want to just give it a nice shiny finish but I don't want to sand away so much clay that we're going to be removing this interesting uh, black in the um, pattern. So that's why I start with a 400 grit. So long as you burnished your clay before you, uh, so long as you burnished your veneer before you put it into the dome shape, you shouldn't really need anything higher than an 800, anything lower than an 800 grit. And so you're just going to sand with a 400 grit until it's very nice and smooth to the touch and then you'll move up to your 1200 grit and repeat everything I'm doing on one side and do it on the other side as well. Okay and here it is now that I am done with the sanding of the wet dry sand papers. So you can see it should have a uh, matte finish to it uh, but it should be nice and smooth and all silky to the touch. So now we're going to bring over some of my sandy papers and now you're going to skip the green the grey and the blue and you're going to start on the pink, turquoise and white. Pink always comes first for the others and then you're just going to sand that exactly the same as you did before and you should start to see that shining up. If I show you there, hopefully the camera can pick up there, that actually has more of a shine than the rest of the area. So you're just going to continue sanding up through those grits and then after that we are going to apply some wax and we're going to give it a thorough buff. Okay, so hopefully you can see the very big difference there. So you can see how beautiful and shiny that has become. And this is just with the polishing papers. Now we're going to take some renaissance wax, which you do not need if you don't have it. It just will add a little bit of an extra shine when we uh, buff us. But by no means is it absolutely necessary, especially since we don't have uh, mixed media or any paints, inks, things like that on our um, piece. If you did, you would want to seal it with something like the wax, uh, but the wax also just adds a beautiful finish to the piece. Okay, so I just rub that all over and then you can hand uh, buff that by just taking a rag and rubbing or you can use a buffing wheel and a Dremel. I'm using a Dremel 3000 and this will give you a stunning buff. So this makes a little bit of noise so you might want to turn the sound down uh, and I will show you how to do it.
Okay, and so that's the one side. You can see there how beautiful and shiny it is. Soon it buffs up to an absolutely beautiful glass like finish. And you can actually see the difference here. This one was made from uh, Kato actually. And you can see here that although this one buffs up very well, this one's just like glossy. I love the soon, the way it buffs up. You can see there what a big difference it is. So I buff up the next side as well and then we can finish it off. And there we go. So you can see how glossy that side has become now. And it really brings out the colours as well, which is something that is great. So, now I'm going to put this to the side, and I'm going to bring over what we need to assemble our piece. Yeah. And so I'm just going to grab an eye pin. And a bail. And now generally what I will do is I will just grab that eye pin, open it up, and I want to attach that bail. And it's just easier to do it now than later when it's already attached to the piece. Because this eye pin is very strong and so sometimes the clay will rip sooner than this will open. But that does make it very fiddly. So just bear with me. What we want to do is we want to grab this and sometimes pliers really help. We want to really press that in and then stop twisting it in. Okay, sometimes having the bail there can actually give you a little bit more to hold on to as you spin that in. Okay. Just continue until it's tight. Yeah, and then just check that that's in there properly. Okay. And there we go. Uh, and then you can put a little dab of glue there, but that's pretty secure in there. I'm pulling on it quite hard and it's pretty secure. Uh, so I'm not going to worry about putting any glue on there. But again, you could definitely put some glue on if you're a little bit um, worried about it coming out. And then you're just going to take a cord of some type. I'm just going to use this rubber cord because it works pretty well. Any cord will work. And there we go. That's how easy it is to assemble uh, the piece. And so yeah, that's basically it. So again, you can use any um, veneer you want with this technique. You don't have to use uh, anything that I used in this tutorial. Go back and have a look at some of my uh, previous tutorials and you'll be able to see a bunch of different veneers that I've done in the past and you can apply those to this tutorial if you want to. Uh, also, if you want to follow along, keep in mind that with the mica shift you do not have to follow the same colours that I used, you don't have to use the same textures that I used, uh, but feel free to follow the tutorial if you do want to and have the supplies. But basically this was about creating the Skinner Blend Makume Gano, uh, which can be done with just about any clay, and also the technique to create the hollow bead. So anyway. I do hope that you enjoyed the tutorial, it was a lot of fun to create and so you can see here that it will work with any veneers, it will work with just about any shape so long as it doesn't have, um, as long as it's symmetrical on both sides, I explained that earlier in the tutorial. And so go and have a look at your different cutters, see what you can uh, pull out and have fun creating. And if you'd like to support this channel so that I can continue making tutorials every single week for free, please do consider becoming a patron. You have access to a bunch of different tutorials uh, on there already and I post new ones every single month so there's a bunch of perks to becoming a patron. You also get discounts to all of the tools and supplies I have on my Etsy shop and it really helps support this channel. And as always, I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye for now.